In this tutorial, we're going to look at several things. As far as circuit concepts are concerned, we will look at the single supply operation of op-amps. We're going to look at the frequency response of op-amps and obtaining a wider frequency bandwidth for a large gain. How to partition gain into multiple op-amp circuits, in other words. As far as microcap is concerned, we will look at the op-amp models and how to simulate more than two op-amps in a single schematic. We will also look at the use of the dot models statement for parametric simulation. For example, if we have a lot of resistors or capacitors or some other circuit element that is replicated throughout the schematic, going in and typing it every single time is a bit time consuming. Can we do that in a quicker, simpler way? First, let's look at the two circuits that we have here. The bottom one is a single op-amp inverting amplifier circuit, which has a gain of 1,000 moles per volt at DC. Whereas the top one is three amplifier circuits connected in series each with a gain of minus 10 volts per volt, so the overall gain is minus 1,000 volts per volt, the same as the single op-amp circuit below. They're being operated off of a single 5 volt supply. These are the MCP6024 op-amp models. Uh, the MCP6024 has four op-amps in it, hence the four op-amps on the schematic. Since we're operating off of a single supply, the reference cannot be ground anymore. And to obtain the reference, we can use a simple voltage divider, as shown in the bottom left of the schematic. We'll use two equal resistors to get VREF equals one half of the supply voltage. The signal source also has a 2.5 volt offset. We can quick look at the signal source. It has a DC offset of 2.5 volts. For the transient simulation, the offset voltage is 2.5 volts. VO, the amplitude is one millivolt and the frequency is one kilohertz. Let's go ahead and try to do a simulation. We have four op amps with the default model. I click run and I get this error message for the student version. There are too many nodes. The op amp model is an equivalent circuit of the op amp and obviously that equivalent circuit has too many nodes and circuit elements for the evaluation version. A way to get around that is to switch the op amp model to a lower level. So when we click on the op amp, and we look at the models down here, there's a level parameter. There are three levels. Level one is the ideal model. Level two is a three-stage amplifier model. And the third one is the most complicated one, the boil model. The boil model has a number of advantages. It's a more comprehensive model. It also includes output voltage limits in the form of VPS and VNS. The three-stage model does not, and that will have an impact on the transient simulation. For now, let's reduce this to level two, the three-stage model. Click OK, and go back to the simulation. I'm just plotting the magnitude response for both amplifier circuits. The blue line is for the three-stage amplifier. The red line is for the single op-amp amplifier. As you can see, with a gain of 60 dB, which corresponds to a magnitude of 1,000 volts per volt, the single op-amp's frequency response is severely limited. In fact, the MCP6024 has a frequency bandwidth product of 10 megahertz with a gain of 1,000 moles per volt. We would expect the amplifier to have a 3 dB cutoff frequency of 10 kilohertz. The three-stage op-amp circuit's 3 dB bandwidth, on the other hand, is significantly larger. If I go to cursor mode and choose the gains, the DC gain is roughly 60 decibels. And if I find my 57 decibel mark, that's about 500 kilohertz. Each of the three stages has a 3 dB cutoff frequency of 1 megahertz. And when we put three of them in series, the 3 dB frequency is approximately 500 kilohertz. The nice thing about the level 2 model is that it allows us to simulate multiple op amps on a single schematic. However, it is not good for transient simulation because as you can see, for a small input, the output is still limited. But if I were to go and increase the 
amplitude to say 100 millivolts, the op amp outputs should saturate at the supply voltages, but unfortunately the level 2 model does not recognize that. Hence the output is claimed to be on the order of 100 volts or so. So be careful with transient analysis when you use the level 2 model or even the level 1 model. Next, let's look at the parameterization of a resistor or capacitor's value through the dot model statement. We have a lot of resistors with identical values. For example, R1, R3, and R5 are all 10 kilo ohms. R2, R4, and R6 are all 100 kilo ohms. So if you have a repeating design, such as a multi-stage filter, you might want to parameterize these values so that you don't have to type them in every single time you decide to change the value. To do that, you would go to Models and then type in the appropriate text. For the case of the resistor, the format is dot model, then the name for the model, then RES in capital letters designates that this is a resistor component, and then its value is R equals 100K. So if I go to R2 and open up the dialog for its properties, I can go to model, choose gain res, and then for resistance I would choose 1, because this will be whatever gain res is going to be go back to the model, currently we've only defined the resistance value. There's also series resistance, parallel capacitance that we can change, also temperature coefficients, TC1, TC2, TCE, and the noise multiplier, which if you're doing a noise analysis, that would come into play. So we'll click OK on this. Likewise, I can go to R4, change that to gain res, change the resistance multiplier to 1, do the same thing for R6. And if I run my AC analysis, I should see exactly the same thing, because we have the same resistor value. Let's say I wanted to change the gain to something different. Instead of 10 volts per volt, I wanted to make that 40 volts per volt. I can increase the resistor value R to 400, save, and then run the AC analysis again. And as you can see, the gain now is at 96 decibels. The next thing I would like to show you is how to obtain plots of voltage gains from one node to another instead of with reference to the original signal source. In this circuit, the original signal source is V3. Let's say we wanted to investigate the gain of only a single stage. Let's say we increase the gain multiplier on R4 to 2, and we want to know what is the gain from the first output to the second output, so out 2 over out 1. When I do my AC analysis, what I need to do then is add a new expression, so I'll plot it on the same graph as the others. The X expression should be frequency, and then I will of course use decibels, and now it's going to be V of out 2 divided by V of out 1 click run and now we can see that the gain of the second stage by itself is 26 decibels. This way you can plot the gains of multiple stages on the same plot along with the cumulative gain at the end. When we get to transistor circuits this will help us to identify where input and output loading is going to cause problems or alter the gain in other words.